Andy Carsley, what, what have we learned from his um, short spell in charge of, of England thus far? That he's a very confusing communicator. <laughs> Because if you line his quotes up since he's been doing the job mm-hmm. alongside each other from sometimes from day to day, yes, um, you don't uh, really get any sense of the man. Mm. Do you want what, what? What do you want, Lee? Well, hopefully I'll be going back to the under 21s Yeah. So you don't want the England job? Well, I didn't say that. No. Well, why are you hopeful about it? Well, I often use the yeah. word hopeful. Just I just chuck it in there a lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, so well, I mean, have you applied for the job? No. Yeah. So you're ruling yourself out. Well, I'm not ruling myself out. Yeah. You are going to have to apply for. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. There's two Lee cars. Leaves, yeah. actually, and one can only tell the truth and the other can okay. only lie. We're going to leave that there. Yeah. Um, what's your lineup for the next game? Yeah. Uh, just... On the weaknesses, Lee, you've put fullbacks. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Well, he doesn't regret his uh, team that he played against Greece. Would I change anything? Maybe. Obviously, the result I would change, but it's not put me off. I don't want to sit back in a month's time with regrets that I was safe. Yeah, no, I, do, I do understand that. And look, I, I think that to answer that question at this point is difficult. But mm-hmm. if we try to do so, then what yeah. we would probably say is when he first took over, he named a squad, which was an interesting squad. It wasn't a... Um, Felt fresh. Yeah, it wasn't a kind of... Um, tied us over until someone comes along to the job full time mm-hmm. and so they carry on what Gareth Southgate's done yeah. and you know we'll keep getting the results because ultimately part of the reason he didn't is because I suppose people would have just groaned and been like more of the same blah 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 yeah. which to me then said the way that he picked the squad meant that he did want the job now I think he probably at this point as we sit here now I think he probably did want the job yeah he may not want it now because he's been absolutely overwhelmed yeah. by the attention, the situation, etc., uh, etc. Et but we don't know that because we don't know him. But, but I, you, I think that's I, the I best don't think guess. that's an unfair guess. Yeah, and, and I think I think that also speaks to something we're going to come on to later in this episode where we talk about who is going to be the England manager full full time. It speaks to the way the FA do things, which I still think is really poor. Now, let me give you, the, let me answer it this way. Let me give you this little kind of um, conversational pathway to, 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 to skip down, Marcus. Uh-huh. If the FA yeah. had thought about this properly, mm-hmm. they could have done the following. They could have, as soon as the under 21s won the Euros in 2023, last summer, so some before last, yes. they could have said, brilliant. Right now, Mm -hmm. you are alongside Gareth Southgate and Steve Holland as an assistant manager. You're going to be there for a year, Mm -hmm. learning the ropes, learning how to deal with the media. You're going to go on this training. You're going to do this, that, and the other because you are a fantastic coach who's delivered what Gareth Southgate didn't even deliver at under-21s, by the way, Mm -hmm. and you are the next guy. You're the next cab off the rank. Rather than saying, Southgate's quit. We kind of thought he would quit. He has quit. Now we need someone who's got absolutely no idea, clearly, of what it takes to do the job off the pitch. He's a good coach, but he can't handle it. If he had a year in situ, been to a tournament, Mm -hmm. seen the exposure, maybe even stepped up as an assistant manager and answered a few interviews and stuff like that, he could have been far better equipped. Yeah, I understand that. So therefore, they're taking it... They're they're almost making it very, very difficult for him to have the skills and the experience to do that job because he's not had the same kind of background that Southgate had. Yeah, so talking about working with the media as in in the you know, England senior side, and then I do take that point. I mean, he did work with the team during during the Euros a bit. He, he wasn't particularly... But he wasn't groomed no, he wasn't in that way. Not, 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 no, but I mean, you could say though that maybe they talked about that and maybe Southgate and Holland didn't want that and maybe Carsley didn't want it. But that, thought, yeah, but... You don't know the, the, the chat, but I take your point, but he did... Was it against Switzerland? I forget which game it was. It could have been the Switzerland game where he did a lot of prep about how they Switzerland set up defensively and blah, 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 and all that. And, and Holland and, and Southgate and some of the stuff were very impressed with what Carsley did. So he was working yeah, with them. I, and I get, I, know, I, I get not being that. groomed yeah. for the job. I do take I get your point that, and that. I know that. And I understand that they have a lot of different staff doing things. And if Carsley's rated as a yeah. coach and as a scout, even um, an opposition scout or a tactical expert or whatever, that's fine. But I don't think anyone necessarily, even after the Greece game, could argue that he's not clearly you know, done his homework and, and is a good coach. People seem to rate him as a coach still, right? And they, and they would not not rate him after one game. I don't think that stuff's open to question. The reason he's been asked to do that in the camp under, under Southgate is because he's good at that. The point is, if you want a proven pathway from academy level, under 21 level through to the first team at England, which I suggest would be a good idea, you need to do it in the right way. Well, we're certainly um, seduced by that idea that, that somebody coming through the ranks, obviously with, with Southgate 
being that man for England and, and so nearly winning um, a trophy. We also look at Spain with De La Fuente, how that's worked out, you know, played some of the best football we've seen in, in international tournaments in, in recent years. And of course, Scaloni at Argentina, you know, they came through and there you have the current world champions and the current European champions. Yeah. Could have been England. I mean, to be fair, whoever won that final in the Euros, obviously it was Spain and they were worthy winners, but it would have been the same story. Yeah. So the idea now that at international level, people do finally seem to understand that it is a different role to being a club manager, although there are transferable skills. So again, that is a seductive idea. So I think when Carsley kind of steps up, you start reading about his credentials, you start dipping into um, his um, career trajectory and, and the people with their with their references um, and, and so on about him then you think my goodness this, this seems to, to 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 be the guy and and when you see you know the squaddy picks and the way kind of England you know some of the nice stuff they played in the first half against Ireland you think okay there's something in this but it was always a case of could he do the stuff facing the media now I think it would be a great great shame if everyone was agreed this guy tactically and in terms of coaching and being a manager on the touchline is the right man but oh, but when he faces the media, oh, he doesn't really know what to say, and that's what lets him down. I don't think that'll be it. I think there's three areas, though. I think there's actually three areas. Go on. One is the tactic, yeah. which we both agree on. Two is the the media, the ambassadorial, as Pete said yesterday, the kind of um, mm-hmm. statesman-like role of it. And the third one is dealing with the players themselves. So they've got man management. Yeah, like. and I actually I actually think, as we sit here now, it may sound harsh because he's only been there for a short amount of time, but regardless of what he says, he will be being considered mm-hmm. um, because it's obviously an easy option if they can get it to happen. It's one with the far, far less friction. Because um, the FA's position will be, Lee Carsley comes in, what they're hoping for is it's more of the same mm-hmm. but more attacking and people get off yeah. their back a bit yeah, more yeah, yeah. And, and, and that is the most frictionless mm. way of transitioning to a new coach it hasn't gone like that so far so I think as we sit here now I think he I don't as I've already said I think obviously he's a good coach I don't think he's passed the man management thing based on the personnel he's picked and the way he's gone about it and I don't think he's passed the media thing so for me regardless mm. of how you think what you think the importance level of all those three things are, that's up to you. But I think on two or three of them, he's not he's not past it. Well, and you could even say tactically, I mean, again, against Greece, it's one game, but it was it was really quite bad. In fact, Be- that was, and that's because of the man management, in my view. Well, man management, but also tactically as well. You can't ignore that. Mm-hmm. And the fact is, well, you could say all three. The fact is, he said, well, we worked on it for 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, so he's found, on that game itself, he's found all and, of them, and yeah. I think actually that game might be um, an example that people use, you know, in the near future, I don't think it'd be one, you know, in generations to cover any of that bollocks. But it could be uh, when people, oh, but you remember against Greece, where those the tactics were just all over the yeah, place. Yeah, because it's top work. level, isn't it? It's very unforgiving. Yeah, so I think I think that that actually, you know, part of his sort of, you know, if indeed he he doesn't go on to manage England ever, that could be sort of a, a part of his sort of slight legacy, which would be very unfair, I think. But but you know, as you say, it's top at level. At least he didn't have a brolly. At least he didn't have a brolly. Um, <laughs> I, I think other things that, that that could be a. I said talking about legacy, I mean, he's managed. Four games, but you know, here we are. Uh, would be maybe given a go to some of the younger players. Angel Gomez being a good example, bringing him into the England fold. I think that's been a big win for Carsley because, again, the type of player that England haven't um, used before. Yeah, that's why I find what he's done quite an interesting milieu because he's he's done stuff that's actually quite brave. Yeah, because like, Angel Gomez, mo- most people yeah, who right, watch yeah. f- won't really know who he is, right? Mm-hmm. They maybe have a vague recollection of him playing for Man United. Mm-hmm. You know, he's playing where he's playing in France, and, and he's come in and he's done well. Mm-hmm. I think he's and he's he's offered such an obviously different profile. He's, he's not playing for PSG. No, nah, exactly. So that's a brave thing to do. Mm-hmm. I also think the 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 the, um, the Greece game was on one level quite brave possibly stupid but on another level very weak as far as he just clearly the, 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 the genesis of it was just trying to get as many big players in as he could yeah. and that to me suggests maybe he doesn't want to tell players they're not going to play mm. because he's interim because it's hard because he's not got a great profile because actually these egos that are going to exist in this camp because they're top level players are going to be there arms folded and be like impress me just to interject for a moment it's not just actually the players you're telling they're not going to play it's the country mm-hmm. it's the media mm-hmm. so so you know we, we, all we, these we, things are amalgamated exactly Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. so, yeah. I think I think I think if, it's easy to be wise after the event, and we're not making these decisions. But but I, I do think that if you take the Greece game again, hmm. there's a there's a way he could have stamped his own authority on this team and not done that, yeah. which to me 
I mean, I know I know people are going to think oh, I'm just fucking after time on it, but I did say to you on the morning of the game, yeah. this is a fucking embarrassment. Well, and they, the th- they can't play like well, this. Well, we all agreed with that, and it seemed very odd. And then to throw on two strikers at yeah. the end, it did seem a bit yeah. desperation. Yeah. And actually, when Carsley talks about, I want to put my own stamp on it, which he did hmm. at the start, and then he says things like, the last time we won something was in 1966, so we have to have the ability to try something different. A lot of these quotes, which happened more towards the start of, um, <laughs> I keep talking about the start there, and again, it's four blooming games. No, but, but, you, you, but it's, there's it's a start. It's been a big it, learning curve. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the start of his um the start of his the start of his um tenure as England manager, those kind of quotes suggest big picture, this is what we need to do, this is where we've struggled, this is what we, these are big words. These are these are not the kind of quotes that come from a guy who thinks I'm only going to be interim for six games. Mm. These are the words of somebody who thinks I've got my eyes on the big prize here. Mm. I've, I've been working with the FA for a while. I can see what's going on. I've been, I've been, I've been doing this role. I've been doing that role. But and, I'm not applying for the job. Yeah, oh, so well, you say you don't want it. And so, oh no, Malcolm. And, and, yeah, <laughs> indeed. And so against Greece, when it suddenly does go quite wrong, oh well, well, I'm not really here for a long time. And it did look a bit like he was a rabbit in headlights at times. And you thought. Pfft, Hang on, what's what's going on here? And 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 indeed, Luke, like you have to have some sympathy with somebody who nobody knows what it would be like to manage, you know, have a big job like England until you do it. Yeah. And if he's not been a number one that much, which he hasn't, you know, all sorts of thoughts could could go through his head. He's thinking, you know what? Actually, I I I have a you know a good job at the FA. He could work for the FA for years to come. If he's England manager, you move up to that post, and then you get sacked quite soon after because the whole country turns against you, or the media, or whatever it may be. You suddenly go. Bloody hell, I'm now unemployed. Do I have to move to another part of the country? Well, it's There's like, all sorts of things, but I don't want to project too much what's going on in his head. But it's like what Vic said on Friday, isn't it? It's not a learning job, is it? No. And he, he has to he has to be ready. Yeah. And and the difference between him and Southgate, because they do have some similarities. Yeah. The difference is that when Southgate came in England, we were at rock bottom. Yes. So he had a time to build. Yeah. It, and they didn't do too badly at the start anyway. But if mm. they had done badly, he could have said, Well, what do you expect? I'm yeah. building something here. Yeah. You got me in here because you needed someone to get this mm. done. Whereas Carsley's coming in off the back of a final. Mm. Uh, back of two finals, actually, really. Well, then, yeah, yeah, the European. And and and, and, and so people are people are expecting an awful lot and i do think that's why you can't overlook the idea that the man management and the media element of it is 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 argu- as sad as it sounds and i know someone who's a bit more of a fit- football purist like you would kind of balk at this as sad as it sounds it's arguably more important than the tactical stuff because I think mm. once you've done your pro license and once you've been around camps and once you've got a reputation as as being a good coach and being tactically good i mean a lot of people are good at that yes. top level, no, right? I, I do and, and, and the thing that separates you out is the way that Southgate, for example, could tap into the the feeling of the country, yes. or really make England mean something to these players again. Well, that's all done now, yeah. and it's difficult for him to have move, room to manoeuvre other yeah. than the results. But when we say it's done, you've got to maintain it. It doesn't. It, that doesn't. It's not a given. That's his job. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to maintain it, and and you know he, he understands. He says yeah, it's a privilege, unbelievable opportunity, and, and responsibility. I want to make sure the squad is in a really good position. Well, the squad is is in a good position. You could argue, as you say, off the back of a final. So I, I, I would just to answer your question, Marcus. I would just say we've learned that actually already even quicker than I thought we would. That it, you know things before weren't that bad. Yeah. And and now. You know, you you introduce something completely new into the system, into the into the process. You know, it's going to create uncertainty, yes. and uncertainty when you've got so little time to work with the players, and the, and the calendar is so um, busy, is not a good thing. Yeah. All right. Coming up after this, could Thomas Tuchel become the next England manager? Stay with us. <laughs> Hello, I am Sven Goran Eriksson, and you are listening to the Football Ramble. Oh. The late great man himself. Ah, oh, it's still lovely to hear that voice. Right then. So, if not Carsley, then who? Carsley himself said that England deserve a world-class coach who has won trophies. Again, <laughs> if you want the job, you don't talk up other people's credentials, mm. really. Um, but Carsley will be in charge for the uh, the final two nations. Well, yeah, I mean, he has won a trophy. Well, okay, trophies. Uh, he, he got promoted with uh, Derby County in 1996. Was it a trophy? Uh, second place they came. Okay, so no. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> what about Birmingham City Player Player of the Year, 2008 and 9? All right, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You're in, Lee. Is, is that what... Is, I see what you're doing, Lee. He suddenly fancied yeah. it. Yeah, but what about... Uh... Right, as he said it, a medal for that in his pocket. <laughs> oh. 
Is that the Football League Championship second place promotion medal of 2009? There you go. Yeah. Uh, well, um, England will be under Carsley for their next two games, which are uh, mid-November next month. Um, now, there's the small matter of the World Cup qualifying campaign next year. Now, that starts towards the end of March. Yeah. I and obviously we will find out only in time. I will find it very interesting if Carsley's still in charge for those games. It means one of two things: either the FA have still not got anybody, or the person who will get the job will be um, taking it when they finish their club season. But um, that aside for a moment, it's been reported in Germany that Thomas Tuchel is in negotiations with the FA to become the next England manager. Of course, he would be, if he got the job, indeed, um, he would be the third non-English manager um, in the national team's history should he manage that. One complication, though, is that Tuchel is now the bookies' favourite to take over at Man United should Eric Ten Hag finally um, get sacked. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what do you make of, of Thomas Tuchel in terms of England? I make exactly this of it. Thomas Tuchel wants the Man United job. Yeah. Thomas Tuchel is trying to. F Thomas Tuchel's people and Thomas Tuchel are trying to force Man United's hand mm -hmm. by saying to Man United, "It's not going to get any better for Eric Ten Hag. You know it. I know it. Mm. You need to make a move. If you don't make a move, my client is very, very likely to take the England job, and you'll miss him. And I think it means that Man United want Thomas Tuchel, and mm -hmm. Thomas Tuchel wants to go there, and he's trying to force their hand. I find it very difficult to believe at this point that the FA are in, are in negotiations with Thomas Tuchel. Right. I, that's that's my take on it. And I. And I would broadly agree with you, to be honest with you. I say broadly. I if, would if agree you, with you. If you want me to entertain the, uh, the well, ent for a moment, entertain the idea so, to entertain of the idea, taking the job. Well, I'd be against it for a couple of reasons. I'd be against it because I believe the England manager should be English. Mm -hmm. That's just how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not just thinking it necessarily matters that much these days that it, he's German. I'll, I'll, in a moment or two, I will put that to the test. But carry okay, on. fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, Pep Guardiola. No, I don't spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> he's practically English now anyway. He's been here forever. <laughs> He likes. He, he's always hanging around with Noel Gallagher for God's sake. They get more English than that. Um, yeah, Noel Gallagher. I think he should be an Englishman. I think, right. and, I, and I do understand there's connotations with that when it comes to you know, you know, the idea that the person who manages the international side, the national side, should be of that nation. I, I get that. Like, if you're a smaller nation, you don't want to miss opportunity. No, right? but, yeah, but that's no, my broader. I, mean. I, 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 I just think yeah, England should be producing coaches. It's been a problem in the past. It's not so much of a problem now. Mm. They should be doing that, doing it that way. The second thing is, I think it would represent, not just Tuchel, but if you went after a high-profile manager of that nature, it just represents, really, a quite unceremonious ripping up of the work that's been done, yeah. creating that culture in the background. Now, I'm not suggesting that someone like Tuchel or Klopp or whoever it would be couldn't tap into that, but I do think it's different. I if you think of the you practical mean. nature of actually going to an England camp or representing England in an international tournament... I'm not saying Tuchel couldn't be good. I'm just saying he wouldn't be tapping into that in the same way that an English coach would. Mm. And to me, for a nation of England, England who you know, have done so much in international football, um, or in some cases so little, <laughs> they've been a big part of the furniture. Yeah. It'd be sad that we couldn't produce a coach of our own. So to me, I guess the next point after that, though, is, OK, Luke, that's fine, but who? Mm. I don't really know is, yeah. is the answer. I mean, you, you're looking at probably prizing that Graham Potter, maybe prizing that yeah, Eddie Howe, yeah. uh, or, or you're going to go with Carsley. Um, so it's difficult to say. I, I don't think that Tuchel will become the England manager, but you know, I could be wrong. What do you think? Well, I, I think you're right. Um, and I think some people would sort of think, yeah, I know he's a manager. He's obviously, people remember him winning the Champions League with Chelsea. They think, okay, well, he's obviously quite handy in cup competitions and all that kind of stuff. But I think people would sort of go... Yeah, I get it. But I think the feeling, what you've just described there... He sets everything on fire, Tuchel, by it after a while anyway. I mean, that would be spectacular at the FA. Oh, yeah. He would fall out with people. He would, after a while, he'd start causing problems. I also don't know if a coach like him is a very intense, quite tactically innovative... So, so these, Because these days, I think the, the international job is a far more custodial job yes. than a kind of tactically innovative job. Okay, well, that leads us neatly to, to my next candidate I've got for you. Do you think the FA really what they're doing with Lee Carsley, which is why he's sort of quite confused, is they are getting the nation used to the idea of a notable egg managing England. Could do. Is, it, is, it, is, it, is, this a, uh, is this a Trojan horse egg <laughs> that's going to release another more impressive egg? Well, because Le Keep have reported that Pep Guardiola is being considered by the FA. I'll tell you, Le Keep, right? Yeah. He, he definitely is. <laughs> because he's Pep Guardiola. He's been We're considered all considering by him. <laughs> we all consider him all the time. I think Fulham are as well, despite yeah. Marcus Silva's fine work. <laughs> yeah. um, so, uh, you know, if the price is right. Um, Pep Guardiola, I... 
there's something in the back of my mind that thinks I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be as shocked as some if he if he was in the England hot seat. Like I say, the the thing is those those two qualifiers in March. I think maybe Carsley they might sweet talk him into taking them. But 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 Guardiola has been very open to the idea of leaving Manchester City, and he's spoken about international teams. Now it would be incredibly romantic if Guardiola was to say take Brazil for example, which you know he he's also open to that idea. But the England job is is vacant really uh, currently. And so uh, he's been in this country a long time. We know that when Mourinho was here way back when he was managing Chelsea, when he when he was still charming the socks off everybody, that, and it was seen as probably the best coach in the world, that he was was tempted to take the England job, even though he didn't really have any ambition to do it and be an international coach back in that time in his career. But he saw the public affection towards him and suddenly everyone was like, oh, go on, go on, go on. And he was like, you know, that is very seductive. If Guardiola was to get a sniff of that, Again, I, I let me let me let me say like, what I think about this is you know people might be listening to this going well Guardiola's is never going to take this job whatever it's mental he's had plenty of opportunities to say he doesn't want to do it and yes. it's not there for him and he, this is yeah thanks very much it's a great compliment yeah. but yeah. it's not for me and he hasn't done that no he's also someone who's obviously works at a very intensive rate and he's been at City as a coach longer than he's been anywhere else by quite some distance actually I mean this kind of seminal period oh, yeah. at Barcelona was only four years and now he's been at he's been at um, uh, City double that and counting right so so um, Bayern as well it was similar to it, it may well be he feels like despite the fact that he's still relatively young man as a coach he may want to move into the international arena right mm. and England would be something that would be I think the respect he's received the journey he's had when he came to the Premier League and, and a lot of people, not us, but a lot of people were like, oh yeah, but can you actually do it here? Mm. And he had to win them over and he's done that. And now yeah. no one... Do you really think quest- he has won them over? Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> and no one really questions it now. And the journey he's had is, and now he's almost treated, he, he's almost treated like an honorary part of the furniture in the Premier League now, yes. which is quite interesting because there's only a handful of non-English or non-British figures mm-hmm. that have had that kind of situation. Mourinho would probably be one of them as well. Klopp. Yeah, Klopp probably, yeah. Uh, but but Guardo clearly has an affinity with, with England. Yep. He likes the culture. He likes being here. So so I see that I see the point. I get the, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> but I, I get I get the link and he's not ruled it out. The issue is what his motivations yeah. are. Because yeah. what I mean by that is for him to take the England job, he's going to have to take a monumental pay cut, like a gigantic pay cut. And that's even mm. if we're sticking with the published figures that Man City are paying Pep Guardiola. Yeah, but I, he's going to have to take a pay cut everywhere. But I mean, the pay cut... No, not necessarily. What, for international jobs? No, if, no, 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 no. If Guardiola, whatever Guardiola's okay. next move is, yeah. he doesn't necessarily have to take a pay cut. Right. For, it, I think I think there are countries out there, I think as Andy said a while back, there are countries out there who would find the money. Yeah, but countries that he wouldn't be interested in managing. Fine. So it just depends what his motivation is, what, what his main yeah. ambition is. Yeah, so he, he wouldn't be on peanuts, but I take the point. He, he, might, he might say... Uh, uh, what's important? I've made more money than I can ever spend. But he's always what, what I what I would prefer to do now is do something that could actually mean something more than that. Look, he would if if he was going to manage at international level, it would be a top international side. He's managed at, at top teams in in his career. He's not managed a side which is not um, a top level team. Okay, so um, I, 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 I think with Guardiola, if he wants an international job, he'll be looking. Um, he, he, he even mentioned the, um, uh, the the Copa America before. You know, he said, "I would like to, you know, do a World Cup and maybe a Euros or a Copa America." Blah, blah, blah. So been been purposely vague about it. So I I would see Guardiola. He would manage maybe Brazil or maybe England. They're the two. But jobs. I, I think that he won't manage Spain, of course, for obvious reasons. No, I, I love the idea of him doing it. And when I first heard it linked, I thought it would never happen. I'm I'm saying, you know, it may happen potentially, I suppose. There's clearly a reason why people who are connected to him, journalists who've got good contacts, are saying what they're saying. And I, I believe that there's, there's potentially a bit of river room there. My feeling now, and I've articulated this in the Lions Watch episodes leading up to the Euros, my feeling now is that the international job, and an international job is so different to a club job now, mm-hmm. that you've actually... You've, it's not a coincidence, as, as I said, actually, after the Euros, and you mentioned it today, Scaloni, De Fuente, mm. Southgate, you know, these are, these are managers who've gone deep in tournaments that haven't really had a club managerial career. Mm. And the reason for that is the transferable skills from managing at academy level or under-21 level are so much more relevant to the main senior team yeah. than coming in from 
from from from outside because we said it about Tuchel. The same things apply to Guardiola. Mm. Guardiola is a guy who obsesses over details, obsesses over controlling things. Mm. He's not someone who's used to be able to hand players back for months on end and and spending all his time watching games yeah. and not being able to do anything about it. I just think the interference level he would need would probably end up putting a lot of backs a lot of people's backs up in at club level. And I don't know if it'll be transferable. Not because he's not the greatest coach of all time. I think he's obviously right up there. But he can't control the stuff he needs to control and the mm. way he likes to work. Now, I don't think it's beyond someone of his clear ability, talent, intellect, whatever, to change how he works and somehow figure it out like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. But you've got to expect you've got to understand that he might not want to do that. Mm. So I don't know, there's a lot of unanswered questions there. I would much prefer him to to Tuchel and I would be prepared to disregard and throw out the window all my previously held convictions about the fact that he should be an Englishman. If he if, got a blue passport. <laughs> if he worked on his English. <laughs> no, obviously, no, obviously, I, just, okay, obviously I get it. I'd love I get him it. To do it. Well, I mean, I suppose as well, I mean, the, 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 the argument Against him taking the job, as we sort of speculate. What do you think about it? Well, I, I think it would be a phenomenal point. I, I just think that if. But do you think it would be transferable? Do you think he'd be good? Well, I think I think it's more likely, um, as I'm saying this, that, that Guardiola would probably want to take a break from football, like a proper break, as he did when he went to New York and study and sort of brush up on this. But, but in the grand scheme of things, that it, wasn't that long. It wasn't that long, and, and, he, also, and he obviously went out to go and work some stuff out. Yeah, and also as well, if you want to move into the international arena, and if if he does finish with Manchester City come the end of this season and the England job is there and everyone's like, please, come on, do it. Get us over the line. It's, it's, it's an incredibly tempting thing. And I... I... I, th- I, think, I, I think I think him and maybe Klopp would be the only two where you just in this country because that's where they've they've operated. Klopp yeah. has done his best work in England. Just you know, Dortmund was great, but come on, his best work was was here. Guardiola, perhaps not his best work, but certainly some of his finest work is up there. We're familiar with them. We have the familiarity with these guys much more than anybody else. As you say, part of the, the furniture of English football now they've influenced the game here so much around the world, of course, but here and they've developed English players as well. The England national team is in a, in a, in a good position and in a better position as it was in decades for a number of reasons. But one of them was because Guardiola and Klopp, Klopp were, were, were managing here. Um, so, but we're talking about Guardiola if he wanted the job and the FA gave it to him, I think everyone would be a bit like, it's. they're trying to find a cheat code to win a tournament, but my goodness, you'd have to take it. And I think he's... You'd have to take it with a big old grin on your face. Absolutely. Completely agree. And I, th- I think there's maybe an element, because he's such a football obsessive, I think you haven't got to be English to understand that mm. England winning a major trophy is, you know, arguably the holy grail of international football, right? Yeah. And the reason we know that's the case is because we spend all of our time talking about it, yeah. and the people who don't even like England spend all their time laughing at us about it. Exactly. So it means something to everyone. Yeah. Um. The the ho- it is probably the holy grail of international football. If if, if Brazil had gone yeah. forty years without winning one or fifty mm. or whatever, you'd mm. go. But Brazil probably is the holy grail. But I think this yeah. is this is the holy. They've, they've grail got a long time, but they're not long enough. Exactly. Yeah. And they've won it a lot more. Yeah. Um. I think that might appeal to him. Mm. And, and it could be a case, I mean, just tapping into what you've just said there, it could be the case that he can have the break as well um, and he takes it... Parachute him in just for the tournament. Oh, wow. Carl, he did, we didn't qualify. Oh, he's done the McLaren. <laughs> yeah. The plan's fallen down. So you are technically the England manager. There's no games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that is the holy grail. So maybe if he was to win England a trophy, well, he, he could then go and manage Scotland and get them past the first round. Or well, he could probably have a break at Man City and still win the league. Indeed, yeah. All right, coming up after this, we answer your questions. <laughs> All right, Luke Moore, we've got some listener questions uh, for you and I to How answer. How can they get in touch with us, Marcus, these people that, we're, that you're, you, you, you assure me exist? <laughs> Discord, <laughs> patreon.com forward slash football ramble. That's the, that's the preferred one. Yeah. You can email us, show at footballramble.com. Yeah. Uh, and of course, we're on, on uh, X and Instagram at mm. football ramble. Mm. Um, but Jeff uh, has got in touch and he said, if his poor form continues, would you consider dropping Harry Kane, especially given the options off the bench? I mean, yeah. the option is Ollie Watkins, by the way, Jeff. There's not an awful lot. Not of really, because Dominic Solanke is an option as well. Yeah, come on. He's not in the same class. Anyway, the, would you consider dropping Harry Kane, Luke Moore? You spoke about this yesterday. And you dismissed me and I was offended. Um, but I've got past it now because All right. it's a new day. All right, let me miss you now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Kane has scored goals for England in this calendar year. Mm. You know, roughly the same level. Well, not actually, probably not the same level, but um, yeah, he, he is still scoring for England, I suppose. He scored 68 of the buggers for England. The point I was making, the point I was making, the thing is you're a lot more, I, I can't think of the right word for this, 
I want to say nostalgic, and I also want to say conservative, but I don't think either of those words actually do the job I'm trying to say, so I'll just try and explain it. Mm. You're a lot more likely to cling on to things people have done and say, look, they've done this, they deserve mm. more of a chance, whereas I'm a lot more, I think I, I prefer to move things on. Do you think I'm risk-averse? On England, I think you are a bit more risk averse. So I okay. think you, I understand why you're saying that. Mm-hmm. Um, but the point I was making yesterday, for those who perhaps had nodded off by that point in the show, <laughs> um, just to reiterate very quickly, <laughs> is that we have to understand that Kane's body is starting to arguably and certainly will start to fail him in in football terms. Right? He's the age he's at. He, he's had injuries, particularly mm-hmm. with his ankles. Um, he's he's not he's near the end of his career than the start. So we have to do what England and the FA are fucking terrible at doing and start to think, right, what's happening now? And my argument would be that if you, let's just use Ollie Watkins as an example because he's playing the Champions League, he's scoring goals, he's a great player. Ivan Tony's kind of exited the scene. Dominic Solanke, probably not quite at that level, although he's, you know, ironically, he's playing in the same position that Kane played for Spurs and has done quite well leading the line. They will never become the players they can become at international level if they're not given the chance to do so. And it's totally unrealistic to expect a Watkins to come in and did really consistently deliver on the international stage the way Kane has if you don't give him the chance to get involved. Also psychologically... As it's well. always, always the chat of, of it. Yeah. well, we're just backups to Kane. We're just backups to Kane. Yeah, and so I think if you get into a situation where that's why, that's why I was so well, part of the reason, not the whole reason, but part of the reason I was so annoyed at the formation that they played against Greece is that you've yeah, got, I, you've I got a guy not, here. I couldn't believe they didn't yeah, start. You've, Watkins. you've got a guy here yeah. who's you know, scoring really important goals yeah. at the very highest level and he's been doing it for such a long time and the moment that Kane isn't fit to play mm. you're not going to play him Well, and, and also Luke I mean I think there's still a little bit of a hangover from the Euros not in the Mark Gay sense because he talks about that but in the with us and with Kane in that Kane just wasn't fit he shouldn't have been I mean people said he shouldn't have started the final he should have been at least subbed at half time in the final yeah. and we see the whole kind of oh but because he's the top scorer blah 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 the reason why I would start Kane if fit and I stress if fit is because he is one of the most outstanding forwards that England have ever produced and still scores goals at the international level. But if fit and if not fit are two sort of different things. But to add a little bit of fuel to your argument or the argument that perhaps Kane should be dropped is it's, we can talk about the fitness issues and so on. It's not about as, form, really. No, we can talk about the fitness and form. That's I, I feel that that's slight fool's errand because if a player's not fit, they shouldn't be playing. I mean, the problem for England during the Euros was Bellingham and Kane, the two players who Southgate had invested in um, so heavily into into their attack who just weren't weren't fit and weren't at the races. The thing is actually the style, very different player to Watkins. And actually, if you want to play with these lovely players that England have got, say you play Palmer as a 10 or Foden as a 10, I personally wouldn't have Bellingham, I'd have him a bit deeper, but anyway, that's a different that's argument. My, that was my point for years. And, I, and I've conceded. And you adopted it. Good. Well, it, when it became my idea, I adopted it. Just, just, um, just remember, <laughs> just remember who I am when you're when you're accepting all the awards. Well, I think I won the argument about Kobe Mayne at the Euros. We won the argument. Yeah, <laughs> you won the argument. Apparently, there's a war going on though yeah, between you and I. You won the argument, the same way Jeremy Corbyn did. Come on. Um, so, uh, so with regards to those players with Palmer or Foden or whoever, they're better served having Ollie Watkins ahead of them. Because playing those little slip passes and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And Again, the style. And Kane doesn't really suit that. And I think if you are going to play Kane, you probably are going to play someone like Anthony Gordon because you need those runners beyond him. So it actually, the, 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 the chat I'm more interested in, really, with regards to the sort of fitness of is the style of play. Although, because of his goal-scoring form, because of what he means, and also I think because of the psychological impact that it has of having Harry Kane up front, I think gives that a lift yeah. for, for a lot of the other players in the team. So, I, I, But I really want to... Uh, this is a really good point. And I, and, and you have to, of course, one thing that England aren't that good at at the moment is adjust and adapt properly for the players and the personnel you've got. And if, if it comes up to the, to the situation where Kane does have to retire... They need to switch. And you haven't got someone with the same profile as him. Yeah. You have to adjust how you play. But you I, I want to stress to Jeff, it's not poor form... It's not poor form in the way that we traditionally expect poor form. I mean, yeah. Harry Kane scored 60 plus goals in the last year. Yeah, indeed. It's yeah. not about that. Well, against Finland, he got at home, he got a couple. I understand against Finland away, he wasn't. Well, he scored great, 44 but... goals for Bayern Munich last year. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not too bad, not is it? So, bad. so, I mean, I think that, I think again, it's about succession planning. And you're right, to, Jeff's right yeah. to point out the options. Right, Callum, uh, why are England so easy to get at? Their defence looks very exposed. Now, before you answer this, okay. who had on the sweepstake oh. um, roughly. 
August, three months before people started complaining about the opposite problem they were complaining about in the South Coast. <laughs> because that's what's happening now yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. Well, Carsley w- was was trying to emphasise the attack more, and and that is also you know is going to leave gaps. I mean, it does worry me about England. And South Coast did that in one or two games before the Euros against Belgium. England looked a bit and open. Brazil and, and Iceland as well. Iceland yeah. beat England, and, and yeah. they were catching them. I think for England, there has been maybe a bit of an. Um, a bit of a feeling of, well, we've got really good attacking players. We, we, you know, we've got the profile. You know, teams are just going to defend against us. Before the Euros, before that Iceland game, a lot of the chat was, we know teams are going to sit deep against us. We know that's going to happen. We need to unlock a them, lot yeah. of all that stuff, and and sometimes that can feed into the mentality of, well, that's all very well, but they can also hit you on the break. And I think when they looked at some of the opponents, they thought, ah, probably not, probably not. And obviously during the Euros again, Southgate really kind of went for that defensive solidity, um, and it worked in terms of not really conceding too many goals. But now we're in a situation where we're like, right, we want to be more expressive going forward. What does that mean? And I don't think England have quite found their feet really. Um, Angel Gomez is. We've talked a lot about him as come in. Is he the type of steal in front of the back line that England uh, would perhaps want? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not, actually. So does, do, do, do they put in Declan Rice there? Because if they start going, right, Rice is in there with, say, Bellingham and Foden, uh, which is something that a lot of people said. I, I just think it's too attacking. I think they have to have two proper midfielders in there before they then start going, right, are we going to play Palmer or is it Foden and, and so on? They've got to have a look at that. If you want to try and get Trent Alexander-Arnold in the side, I think one of the other fullbacks has got to be a little bit more defensively minded and capable. Which so causes he, a problem because England have got a shortage of good quality defensive left back. Indeed. So if you want that, if you want Trent bombing forward, then you've got to shuffle over and make a three at the back and all these kind of things rather than just go both fullbacks on you go, which is what yeah. Lewis and Alexander-Arnold were instructed to do against, against Greece. Greece. Yeah. So I, th- I think... I think Carsley has probably thought to himself, right, let's really show our attacking flair and has not prioritised the defence. I think whoever takes the job, whether it's Carsley or someone else, has to think, OK, we have to realise that we're not going to try and play like 1970 Brazil. We have to have a bit of balance and be on nodding terms with the fact that we are a little bit... um, shaky defensively at times soft centred I would say indeed yeah and I think having that extra midfielder in there and maybe a more def- defence minded uh, uh, full back whoever it may be they're not consistent in how they play and when they do have consistency in how they play everyone complains about it and so as I said yesterday England are really judged I mean really judged we can judge the game against Finland. We can judge the game against Greece. We can judge a load of qualifying games for a World Cup and we can probably judge a couple of group stage games if England do badly or particularly well but ultimately they're only ever being judged on a very very small amount of games then the man it says it seems to me then the manager's job is to is to is ultimately to of course get to that stage which can be easier said than done but England tend to generally do it under on the south gate so they should be able to do it then they have to set up a team that gives them the best chance of playing against that particular style of quality of opposition in a knockout game. And I actually think Southgate was doing that. My issue with Southgate in the summer, mm. as I said to you at the time, was actually more the tempo. Yeah. It was more the tiredness. Was, it was so pedestrian. Yeah, it was the tempo and the tiredness. It yeah. wasn't really the tactics because there's nothing wrong with trying to win games. Well, as I say, I think he changed it because of the, the players looking exhausted. And, and we have an imbalance because we can't make a decision on midfield. And we can't make a decision at fullback. Yeah. And sometimes we can't make a decision at fullback because it's hard for us because of the yes. personnel that are missing. Yeah, yeah. The fullbacks in the midfield are the most important thing we need to address going forward. I mean, if, if, if Reese James can get fit again, then to me, he's the answer at right back. But anyway. Yeah, he would, he would be. He'd be anyway. Okay, next question is from Alvin. Which England player impressed you the most and which player impressed you the least in this international camp? It's a good question, actually. Um, I would say that... Um, it, I, Angel Gomez would be yeah. the one that's impressed me the most, chiefly yeah. because he's now as you know he's he's there. He's he's shown England fans, and, and to a certain extent as well, I think the England covering media that although everyone likes to think we don't produce players like that, Lee Carsley has at least been able to mm. say, well, we do actually, yeah. and I found one playing at the top level. Although he did have to go to France, didn't <laughs> yeah, and here he is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I think Angel Gomez would be. One for me. I think Declan Rice as well. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, would yours be Declan Rice, would it? Yeah, I, well, Gomez and Rice, I think that um, that's really good for England. I mean, we've talked about, you know, should Bellingham play deeper and all that kind of stuff to f- try and fit in some of the flair players. Actually, what Angel Gomez has come along and done in the previous camp as well, he's put himself on, on the, the map in, in, in terms of international football. Mm-hmm. Um, great interviewer mm-hmm. as well, uh, or, or interviewee, should I say. Mm. Um, and and, and 
people aren't saying should he be in the squad should he be starting I also like that he's tiny yeah I like that as well he's a short king yeah um, should he be starting is now the question yeah. and he's done that in, in what three or four games for England many Maybe many even. thanks to Adam Morton for his poor form at the start of the season that's probably what he's thinking <laughs> poor old Adam so, yeah, well, yeah, so, so yours would be Gomez as well would it yeah I think I think you've got to say Gomez although Grealish actually it's been great to see Grealish enjoying and, and playing for England again you know got his goal um, well he scored a couple of goals um for yeah. England under Carsley. So I think I think Grealish has been good. And again, people might be thinking, oh, could Grealish now be, you know, because Gordon, I think, has been an player that hasn't really impressed me that much uh, in England. So I understand he was a part of the, the, the game against Greece where it seemed all over the place, mm. but his role wasn't really all over the place. And what was asked of him has been asked of him time and time again. He knows that role playing on the left side. He had a good chance to score. He, he missed. And I, I felt that Gordon... Yeah, in this particular break, I didn't play against Finland, but against Greece, he, I, I, he perhaps didn't take a chance. I still think he should be in the squad, possibly starting, but in terms of that left side, mm. to just, you know, you said Gomez and Rice, so if I can say somebody different, I'll say Grealish. I thought he really put a shift in, as I say, he'd scored um, this time around, scored against Ireland as well in the previous camp, and has put pressure on on on. On, on Gordon who, although he played behind Gordon Woodley against Ireland well true enough yeah he was yeah. centrally but uh, a little spot for him there but Grealish has impressed me and I think I think Gordon may be a little bit more work to do in the next camp ok and I would probably just add that just Harry Kane if you listen to this <laughs> have a little rest mate yeah he shouldn't have, been, shouldn't have been a part of this camp really should he go and get yourself a wet go and have a rest go and get go and get yourself down a nightclub in Stockholm <laughs> just no, like Mr Mbappe go for a coffee with Charlie <laughs> No, I'm sticking to the <laughs> club. Yeah, that sounds really boring. Um, final question from Lee. Hello to you, Lee. He says, now the international break is over. Is Marcus going to be okay? No. Um, <laughs> Put well, back I, in his no, coffin no, now. No, the, the, the question, Lee, is, is, is an understandable one. But really, you need to ask me that um, just after the next international break. Because at the start of the season, the international breaks actually come thick and fast. They do. We had one, you know, a couple of games at the Premier League. And then you're delighted, this? aren't you? Oh, just, uh, There's Premier... nothing better than that feeling after three <laughs> Premier League games where you go, fucking yes! International break. Yes! <laughs> Everyone feels the same. And then after seven games, there's another one. They're not doing, it's not an international break, Marcus, actually. It's tapping into the spirit of the nation. Correct. The very spirit of the nation. Correct. Yeah. Um, so you have three international breaks before Christmas, but it's when you go mid-November to sort of mid-end of March. Yeah, so through it's the barren, winter it's months. Barren. Oh, God. Yeah. I wish I could fly south for the winter. <laughs> so, yeah, so that, Lee, is, is, well. is when I. Uh, <laughs> I still dial in. Um, yeah. That is, Lee, is, is the really, really tricky point. We have Christmas, we have New Year, so a little bit of a distraction, but once you're trudging through the Premier League in January yeah. and February, like, and come uh, on, give me the three lines. Where are my lions? But thank you to Lee for inquiring after your yeah, well being, though, because not enough listeners care about you. Marcus, in, in that way. It probably. They take for granted the voice and the, pre- and the presentation. And the smile. And the smile. And the weekend opening, to be frank. Uh-huh. But they don't ask you about the man. <laughs> and so Lee's done that. And good for you, Lee. <laughs> good for you, Lee. Thank you for watching a clip from the Football Ramble podcast. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an upload. A single upload. <laughs> don't miss out on the uploads. The uploads are in. Important.